This episode is sponsored by Aura, the smart, simple way to stay safe online. Hello and welcome back. As we near the end of 2023, I thought it might be fun to take a look back and remember some of the best, most well-deserved media smackdowns. There's been many, but there are three in particular that come to mind and they are sure to entertain right after this. Your chances of falling victim to online crime are one in four. If you're watching this, chances are you're nodding your head right now because you've been a victim. I'll post a link to this study in the description, but basically, researchers first identified hundreds of US-based data brokers' websites, legally advertising the sale of, quote, military and veterans' personal info. Yes, really. The findings were disturbing. These US-based data brokers sold the researchers everything about these veterans, including medical information and geolocation data. Yes, really. So what's my point? You're not a veteran and you have nothing to worry about, right? Foreign organizations are targeting more than just servicemen. They're targeting everyday people like you and me. And that's where Aura comes in. It's an all-in-one digital safety tool that identifies these brokers selling your info and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle that for you. And in case you're wondering, yes, Aura is a US-based company with 100% US-based customer support staff that's available 24-7. And Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see. Aura also offers credit and identity monitoring, antivirus, VPN, password management, comprehensive parental controls, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. And the peace of mind of knowing that plans include $1 million of identity theft insurance for each adult, up to five adults in a family plan. Go to Aura.com forward slash drone tech and get your first 14 days free. This is a product I trust and you can find that link in the description and pinned comment. All right, so the first SmackDown comes to us from Trigonometry when they interviewed Bill Maher, who claims to be nonpartisan, but clearly still clings on to these purely political narratives that are easily refuted. And just the idea of a guy who doesn't concede elections, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. You guys should, like, stop worrying about all these other little... That's it. That's the ball game. If the guy doesn't concede elections... Did Hillary concede elections? Yeah, of course Hillary conceded... She's, what do you mean? Of course! Of course Hillary conceded... She said she he's an illegitimate president. When did she say that? She said that in 2016. She said he knows he is an illegitimate president. I believe he knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows. He knows that there were a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out the way it did. Oh, that was different. After the election. Yeah. Mm. Russia collusion, what was that if not denying the election? They made up a story, which was a hoax. Well, it wasn't not a hoax. Yeah, it was. What the actual f did you just say to me right now? It well, wasn't just. True. What wasn't true? What part the of. The Russia collusion. The idea that. There the, was collusion with the, Russia. The, uh, the idea there that. There was absolute collusion did, with Russia. Is that why he won the election, do you think? Partly. He's in, boys! He did it! He said it! <laughs> It was a very close election. Oh, that was different. It was a very close election. Uh, yeah, you don't think Russia could sway, like, what, 77,000 votes in three states? Of course they could. No. And I they did. Par partly through social media, partly for their propaganda there and what they were trying to do there, which was very successful. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that's not why? You sure about that? That's why? Partly for their propaganda there and what they were trying to do there, which was very successful. <laughs> there was collusion. But the Democrats also denied the election in 2016. They did. I, okay, I mean, maybe one time Hillary said something like that. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president who got illegitimate foreign... Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. Legitimate. There was a widespread understanding that this election was not on the level. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. As we look at our election system, I think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy, about its integrity. The there one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I mean, maybe one time Hillary said something like that. She does, you ask her today, 
This is not an issue for the Democrats. You're making a ridiculously false. <laughs> Right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. Human. <laughs> I do have to give Bill Maher some credit here, though. You don't see things like this often because left-wingers in the media don't like to have their views challenged. The undeniable fact here is that Democrats began the trend of election denial and escalated it up to the point that Republicans and Donald Trump finally joined in and admittedly escalated things. All right, next up is my favorite pick for 2024 next to Trump and his absolute smashing of a CNN host over questions of government involvement in January 6th. If you had told me, it's close to three years ago that January 6, 2021 happened. If you had told me three years ago, back when I was a biotech CEO, not steeped in this world, I was just consuming passive media, but was focused on my world of developing medicines. If you had told me that January 6 was in any way an inside job, the subject of government entrapment, I would have told you that was crazy talk. Fringe conspiracy theory nonsense. I can tell you now, having gone somewhat deep in this, it's not. I mean, the reality is this. We do have a government, first of all, we have to acknowledge that has lied to us systematically over the last several years about the origin of COVID-19, about the Hunter Biden laptop that we were told was false by 51 CIA experts and otherwise before we now know that it was true. You can go straight down the list, the Trump-Russia disinformation collusion hoax, all of it. Now we come to January 6th. The reality is we know that there were federal law enforcement agents in that field. We don't know how many. I think it's Mr. a shame Ramos, if, if I may finish just answering. Well, let me this just. Is, this is really I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you here because because you're I know this, that the establishment were, doesn't approve of this message. I know that this, there were federal we agents. Be able to talk about this. You're saying that there were federal this is, agents. This is important to talk about. You are saying important. there were federal agents in the crowd on on, yes. on January 6th. Yep. There is no evidence that there were federal agents in the crowd on January so, 6th. So why, before Congress, when pressed on what the number was, they didn't say there were none. They just couldn't so say how many there were. So you're saying that there's no, that you have not seen evi any evidence so that we've there seen were, multiple, and so We've seen multiple informants suggesting that there were. We know people were, we know people were FBI informants who were asked to Is there any evidence? May I just finish this and you can come back let me, and question let me, me. Well, let me clarify. I know it's very uncomfortable for you. I'm going to clarify my question I know this is an uncomfortable issue for many people, you, but we have to do the truth here. I'm going to clarify my question because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm asking. I deeply. And I told you, I was where with you three years the, ago. I'm not there now. Where is the evidence? Yes. Where is the evidence? Now you see footage Ms. coming out of actually rolling out the red carpet for Capitol Mr. Police allowing Mr. people in. Again, right through the front door. The vast door. majority I mean, of that footage, video evidence should have been released shows, before, Abby. Mr. Ramaswamy, the vast should have been majority of the before. footage shows and my deeper police question officers is this. being overrun and, and I want to talk about one more by case. violent this is really important. riders. That's yeah, I'm going to give you hard, I'm give you some hard it, facts. Of it shows. So what, here's what entrapment is. Cherry pick. Here's, I'm not cherry picking. You if I may finish, Abby. If I may finish, Abby. I'm not cherry picking. Examples. To the contrary. To the you country, you know who cherry picked. You know who cherry picked the government. That, that is what happened. The government cherry picked 12 hours of footage when there was 200 hours of footage. So cherry picking was the government, not me. Release so, the whole thing. And let me let me just finish one thing too, because this is super important as a topic. So when you, I when, think this is a civil libertarian issue of our time. When we Gresham talking, Whitmer's kidnapping. I want to keep. I want to be really clear on this because it's the same issue in the same FBI, same even part of the FBI. Three people who were in an alleged plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer were acquitted at the end of trial because it was entrapment. That is, government agents put them up to do something they otherwise wouldn't have done. They gave them credit cards with spending limits of up to $5,000, encouraged them to buy munitions, plan something they weren't otherwise willing to plan. So much so, and I want people at home to know this, especially CNN viewers to know this, is that one of the jurors went to those defendants and apologized afterwards, gave him a hug, apologized, seeing what the government had put a poor guy up to who had to go to some Mexican restaurant across the street to get hot water. These people were exploited with credit cards up to $5,000, FBI agents, putting them up to a kidnapping plot that we were told was true but was entrapment. 14, Same thing with the Capitol Police. People Mr. letting Ramaswamy, them in freely. Many of those people Mr. then Mr. being Ramaswamy, charged. Ramaswamy, look, the government cannot I, put you up I to do something and then Mr. charge Ramaswamy, you for it. Look, That's wrong. I don't want to have to. Do. The, to the left I don't, right, don't, don't want to have wrong. to. I don't yeah, this is just like the Biden thing where they keep repeating that there's no evidence despite the fact everybody keeps giving them evidence. Vivek didn't mention it, but even the Capitol Police chief himself thinks that the government let January 6th happen. And then you got the whole Ray Epps thing, but I have have a dozen other videos about that. Lastly, it's not just the best SmackDown of the year, but possibly the best in several years. With partisan pro-Biden hack and alleged expert of the Hunter Biden saga, Philip Bump, gets his clock clean by Numb Dorman of the Comedy Seller podcast to the point that Bump cries and leaves. 
Enjoy. Do I think that Joe Biden, when he was cognizant of the fact that Hunter Biden was in those meetings, was aware that Hunter Biden was probably using that as a way to bolster himself? Yes, I think he probably was aware of that. Now you see now, you know, fucked up, you know that, don't you? Does that mean that Probably he, or, or for sure. I don't know. I can't read his mind. But I think, yeah, he was probably aware of it. Well, who, how many times- Look, I'm, look I'm, I work for the Washington Post. Probably means for sure in, in how, layman's How many times like, you, have you ever said. called up and had conversations about the weather with strangers? Never. Strange. I, I don't understand. I'm he, saying he that wasn't calling. He wasn't calling Hunter Biden's business associates. He's calling his son. But wait a minute. Didn't Bump just admit that Biden probably knew that he was helping his son's business by making those calls? Do I think that Joe Biden, when he was cognizant of the fact that Hunter Biden was in those meetings, was aware that Hunter Biden was probably using that as a way to bolster himself? Yes, I think he probably was aware of that. I, I don't understand. Burisma is the only thing that the Republicans would be able to hang their hat on. Burisma is identified as as criminal. They're, they're, they're throwing bribes all over the country. Right. There are some significant <laughs> yeah. questions both about Burisma and the owner, uh, Mikhail Lozhevsky. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, that's true. He decides it's okay to meet, have dinner with these people. Now, how is that perceived? Now, that's that's uh, the only reason he would do that, obviously, to help to hook his son up in some way. So I don't remember the timeline of when this dinner occurred. I'm the expert here, right? So I can't I can't speak to that. Well, isn't that convenient for you? When was this dinner? I don't remember when this the dinner, dinner was. March twentieth, twenty fifteen. Is right. The dinner. Fine. So this was before. This, this is, was right at the outset. Or I don't. Biden remember when made the first his anti-corruption was. speeches in twenty fourteen. At the end of twenty fourteen. Sure. Fine. Great. <laughs> Man. No. Well, did, I appreciate your. Has anybody has anybody been. asked her? I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't you think somebody should ask her? Okay. Like I, I'm not. I just said I don't know, and I don't know what to make of it. So I have nothing yeah, to say about it. Right there, Hunter's text says half of his income goes directly to the president. Thanks. I don't know what any of that means. Anywho, ready for lunch? Yeah, what, but doesn't. What do you it, want me to say? Yeah, but you say there's no evidence. No evidence. But then there's a text message where he says, "I give Pop fifty percent of my money." That's that's evidence. Okay. Well, what? Okay. Fine. Fine. So it's evidence. I appreciate you having me on. It doesn't. It, that something like that. Who do you think is being more? I, I listen to that and I'm saying, am okay, I, am I, okay, what, you, you can free you, to I go. Think, I feel you want me to leave, like just walk out in the middle of this because you that go. way you can you like can, You can go. Right. Is this a standard really? This is the way the Washington Post handles people who disagree yeah, with. Oh, that's brilliant. That never gets old. Show it to anybody that claims there's no evidence. Okay, if you're still watching, please hit that like button and keep checking back for more. See you all in the next one.